putting Kule in. But just as Daddy said, the Lord is faithful. Amen. Amen. With all humility, I beg you to stand in the place of prophet. Amen. Amen. And we give thanks to the Lord for it. Daddy, thank you for the opportunity. Let's close our eyes and pray. To you be all the glory, O our Father. To you be all the thanks. And to you be all the adoration. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. We are gathered here for one thing and one thing only. To celebrate your faithfulness. Grant us the grace to go back into our lives. Day by day. Hour by hour. Minute by minute. Second by second. Week by week. And the months. All coming together to see your faithful hand that has been working behind the scene for us. You grant us the exuberance to express this to others. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's quickly open our Bibles to Psalm 124, celebrating his faithfulness. I'm going to do three readings. Three readings. Psalm 124, 1 to 8, and then we'll do Ecclesiastes 3, 21 to 23, and then Romans 8, 31. Amen. Let's, let's first begin with Psalm 1 to 4, the New King James Version. If it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, let Israel say now. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters would have overwhelmed us. The stream would have gone over our soul. Then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who had not given us a spray to their feet. Our soul has escaped as a bird from the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Amen. Now let's, let's go quickly to Lamentations. Chapter 3, 21 to 22. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. And then finally, Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. And then 31. If you, Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to be his things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, or how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it, writ as it is written, for your sake ye are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Amen. Celebrating his faithfulness. In the psalm that we just read, is a psalm of ascent or a psalm or a song of degree. It is a psalm or a song that was penned or sung by King David. But the circumstance under which he sang the psalm is still unknown. But it is known that David, although he was the anointed of God, David, although he was the one that was closer to the heart of God, David, although had the favor of God, David, although was a king and had everything to his favor or everything that he could ask for would be given him, David had issues. And one of the issues David had was an issue with enemy armies. 
the Philistines in particular, who gave him restless night, sleepless night, who placed his kingdom and his people and his own life in danger. So in a time of jubilee or celebration when they had to go to the temple to praise God, David led a procession with the high priest, with the prophets, with the Levites, and with the people following. And as he climbed the steps, he started singing. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side. Let's stop there. I love football. And one of the programs I love on TV is um, Match of the Day. When I don't get the time, the time to watch it, I record it. And then I watch it. If I miss it, I go on YouTube and watch it. But one thing I love in particular about Match of the Day is the pundits. The way they talk about the teams. The way they discuss the individual players. And sometimes, before the match comes on, they can sit down and analyze and predict that this team will win. And when they say that, they have reasons why they say this team will win because maybe there is a particular player in that team and that player can make all the difference in that match or in that game. Or there are two players. That player could be a defender or a midfielder or a striker or even the goalkeeper. And what we tell you if your team, for example, this evening when I was coming, I was listening to BBC News on my phone, sitting in the car. And then they said that Barcelona is playing today. But the good news for the other team is that Lionel Messi is not playing tonight. So the thing is, whether your team will win or lose depends on who is in the team. So sometimes these players, we call them match winners. Your team could be down, but when they throw them in halfway in the match, they can make all the difference. And David is looking at this. And then he said that if it had not been for the Lord, when somebody makes a statement like this, what the person is saying that, the battle or whatever the situation was, was unwinnable. He had the army. He had the people. He had the anointing. He was in the covenant. But he himself knew that even though the hand of God is upon me, I have the covenant. I have access to heaven. But this one. And I'm here. I know that there is somebody here. Who has experienced what David experienced, knowing that you had everything there, you know, you, you knew you have to have, have for that thing, but you knew that this one was unwinnable, yet you won. So therefore, you can agree with David tonight, or throughout this period of Thanksgiving, I said, if it had not been for the Lord, who was on our side, in fact, Extra biblical facts says that David trusted God coming onto the battlefield by his side so much that there were times he would intentionally break the knees of his horse. So he could write and say, I do not depend on my horse and my armor because they will not bring me victory. Because he saw that, look, the only person that can make a difference in whatever circumstance, challenge, or even his kingdom was God. So David said, if you are not been for the Lord, I am here to remind somebody, if you could go back and recount, you will find out that if it had not been for the Lord, you wouldn't be sitting here. I know that if you are not been for the Lord, who had been on my side and on the side of the family, we wouldn't be here. Over the week, the weekend, I chance on a brother I have seen for, I have not seen for a long time. And I said, I've been calling you. I've been calling you. You know, you have, you've not been taking your, you know, my calls. He said, Pastor, bro, you don't know what happened to me. I said, what happened to you? He said, all those times you were calling me, I was in a jail. I said, how? Pastor, but your phone rang. He said, yes. 
the phone rang, but I, I said, what happened? He said, I was at work and immigration came. Not knowing that the person that employed him called immigration on him. And he said, we were there. And they interviewed and everything. But for some reason, they looked at me and they said, you go. If it had not been for the Lord, and I believe there is somebody here, you can acclimatize yourself to this situation. That if it had not been for the Lord, who had been on your side, and then he goes on to say, now let Israel say, it is like a wedding ceremony and then the, the priest will say, will declare, if there is anyone here who is not in support of this wedding, let the person say it now or hold your peace. So David is saying, say it now if it is not it. And the place was quiet. He said, if you are not being for the Lord, not for man, the Lord, Yahweh, the almighty, the all-powerful. In fact, uh, I'm Psalm 24, verse 7 to 10. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, for the king of glory. And he said, who is the king of And he says, the Lord, mighty, powerful, strong in battle. This is the one that have been on the side of David. And this is the one that is on your side, on my side. This is the one that stood by you in the night watches when you were diagnosed with something terrible. And you thought your life was ending. This was the man who stood by your side when you had the call that your child, this had happened to that child. This was the God that stood and said, I take this one out. If you have not been for the Lord, let us say it. TBC, if he had not been for the Lord, he, as an individual, if he had not been for the Lord, as a family, if he had not been for the Lord, as a congregation, if he had not been for the Lord, let us now say it. The one who is making all the difference. The God who is making all the difference. So he goes on. When men rose up against him. This one is not demons. Men. Flesh and blood. People you know. A man's enemy shall be there of his own household. When they rose up against you. When they go about spreading word about you. They go about spreading deadly words about you. And sometimes it is not the word that somebody is saying. But you yourself, when you hear what, is been going, what has been going around about you, your heart breaks. When men rose up against you. When human beings rose up against you. When they set up to seek your downfall. In fact, the Bible says that some men came together in a covenant and bound themselves in a curse that we will not sleep, we will not eat, we will not rest until we kill Paul. I call them evil mixture. Until we kill Paul. But the Bible says when they were plotting it, a young man had it related to Paul, disclosed the information, and Paul was. See, there are people, there are things, there are covenants, there are people coming into part because of you. But God had been on your side. And I'm trusting God that throughout from tonight until Sunday, you will go back into a memory journey. You will identify one of one after the other. And then you ask your, yourself the question, how did we come out of this one? You see, the thing about David's pen in this is, is a man who, when he's standing around, he's looking around himself and he's seeing all victory. And sometimes it is, it is easy to praise God, to be thankful when you're in a victory. But comparing him to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, as daddy said before I came on, was a man who all the while was embodying the mystery. 
the agonies, the pain that his eyes were seeing about his people Israel. That is why he could cry and say, if I have tears like a well, I will weep for my nation Israel. He couldn't bear it. He saw the atrocities the Babylonians brought. He saw, in fact, when you read from the verse one, there was a time he said, he said the, even the chains on our hands were too heavy for us. Oh, have you worn a heavy shoe before? I remember when we were, when we were children, and I said, I'll not do that to my foot. The shoe you take to school, you need time to master walking in that shoe because it is heavy. And if you had boys like myself who, you know, was causing trouble, even the sole of your shoe alone is like a brick. So you drag your feet. We used to call it break your leg. And when you look at your leg, eh, from the, from the knee down in that shoe, it's like a mos- mosquito in Wellington. You drag your feet. You drag your feet. After two weeks, the heel go, and daddy gets upset. I bought this shoe, but it is not you. It, that thing is too heavy. And that was how it was. He said, even the chains on our hands are too heavy for us. And when you do extra biblical fast, you find out that even the cells they placed them in, they could not turn. It was difficult to turn. So Jeremiah could say, even through that, our prayers are blocked. Not that God was not listening to them or their prayers were not going. The pain, I don't know if you have been in that situation, you are in too much agony that you can't even open your lips to pray. That was the situation Jeremiah and Israel were in. But then in the midst of this, I recall the faithfulness of God. Maybe you are here experiencing something like Israel experienced. Or you are here like a mother or a father embodying the pain and the agony of a child or a family. But I'm here to tell you that is not the end because that shall not be your end. If you can recall the faithfulness of what God had done before, he's going to do it again. So he goes on to say the steadfast love of the Lord, his mercies, the hesed, the covenanted love. You see, one thing with God, eh? he can take his presence away from you, but he can never take his love from you because he loves you so much. Deuteronomy chapter 6 says, Moses said to Israel, it is not because of your beauty. It is not because you are numerous. It is not because of your height that the Lord loves you, but he loves you because he loves you. He loves us. So Jeremiah could recall that. I am here to tell someone, maybe you cannot acclimatize yourself to what David was saying, but maybe you can find side with what Jeremiah is saying because Jeremiah and Israel's story just, is just like yours. But I'm here to tell you, don't close your eyes to the story. Recall. And if you can recall, you will see the faithfulness of God. And in the midst of that, you can praise him. You can thank him. You can worship him. You can lift him up. You can adore him also. Because there are times when, you know, as a Christian, you'll be going through issues and you're going through challenges. And it's like you come to church and everybody, Minister Cheko is leading praise or leading worship. And the whole place is exuberant and the people are jumping and people are kneeling before the altar and you, you're looking at yourself and say, what are they doing? Why, why are they praising? Because you look into yourself, there's nothing to praise God for. There is nothing to be thankful for. But if you can recall, the mere fact that you are here, the mere fact that you are here is a sign that there is a God that reigns. Because God has never abandoned his hesed covenant. And he's not going to start with you. He's not going to start with you. His steadfast love. His mercies. His mercies. His mercies. His mercies. And the mercy is saying that you deserve it. You see, when you talk about mercies, you're also talking about justice. You deserve it. You're not talking about grace. You're talking about his mercies that I have done this thing. This thing is happening to me because of this. But I'm trusting you. I'm 
trust me to look, to give you mercy. I heard a story of a man who was speeding and then uh, the police stopped him. And they said, sir, do you know you are, you are going beyond 30? He said, officer, I don't know, but I believe you. He said, why do you believe? He said, if I'm not going beyond 30, you wouldn't stop me. He said, for that reason. He said, why, where are you going? Why are you in a hurry? He said, I'm going to preach. I'm preaching. And I found, just found out that I'm late. And then he said, why are you late? He said, I'm a preacher and a businessman. And I found out that most of my machines were not working today. And there was nobody. It's a weekend. So I have to stay behind and then, you know, service them before for the client. He said, okay, it's not a good enough excuse. You're going to court on Monday. So he took me to court. And the man was standing there. And uh, the judge asked him, how do you feel? And the man said, guilty. But I asked for mercy. And the judge asked him, why do you mean you asked for mercy? He said, because I've done the wrong thing. But I'm asking you to be merciful. And then he went on saying, sir, in the Bible, there was a story of a woman who was caught in prostitution. And when they were going to stone, stone her, another man came called Jesus, started writing on the, on the, on the ground, something nobody knows, and then asked them, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. He said, the judge said, is that also in the Bible? He said, yes, sir. He said, look, I've been in the church for 40 years. I've never seen this. He said, come and show him. So the man, that's why it's good to walk around with your Bible. He looked into it and found the Gideon's New Testament and opened it and went and said, sir, here. The man read it. He said, go, you are free. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a true story. This is a true story. I heard a pastor say it. He said, it's a true story. He said, is that also in the Bible? Go, you are free. Because the judge found that he who is without sin, mercy in action. About two weeks, almost a month now, I was sharing with Daddy when he came back from Ghana. I had just dropped the kids at school, 8 a.m., and I was coming back at my junction, turning and driving about two minutes to the house. There was a small traffic, and I was in the traffic, you know, just pushing my bed, and the sprinkler was against me, waiting to turn right. And there was this um, Range Rover. He gave me the light. He said, come over. So as I turned in and I was going, I was going. Then through my rear view mirror, I could see that people are waving me down. So I slowed down. And a gentleman came to my window and said, sir, you are in an accident. I said, me? I'm not in an accident. So I parked the car and I went. And there was this lady on the road. Bicycle. So I asked what happened. Nobody would talk to me. The only excuse is to say black man there. All white. And they were, somebody, somebody even tried, you know, nearly poked my eye out. So they called the police, they called the ambulance, and I'm standing there. And when the police came, the police separated me from them because the police officer that was doing the job, he said, he said relax, don't, relax, don't let this girl go. I said, I can relax. And then he interviewed them. So whilst they were interviewing them, another guy came. An IC3, those of you who have been in secondary school, IC3 is a black man. An IC3 giant guy came. He said, officer, ignore all this. I am the prime witness. I am the one who was, who, who was driving the Range Rover. I am the one that gave him the light. He said, this man had done nothing wrong. He said, so the officer said, where have you said? When the thing happened, I'm left here. So I, I drove and I was at Streatham, but something kept telling me, turn back. And I kept refusing, but it came to a point I couldn't, so I had to turn back. And come. And that's why I'm here. He said he didn't do anything wrong. I gave him the light. The bicycle rider was at top speed. And she didn't see the man, the BMW, going over. And by the time she saw him, it was too late. So she rode into the back. But the, the funny thing is, I did not hear vibration. I did not hear bang. I wasn't playing any music in the car. Nothing. So I just kept on going. And that's why they said I'm in an accident. Because they thought I was running away. And that was the heaviest crime. And the lady was a white woman as well. So the policeman said, really? He said, okay, are you willing to come to court and testify? He said, everywhere I'll come. Then all of a sudden, all the witnesses, I said, don't worry. The witness said, judge, you didn't do anything wrong. All the people that were accusing me from church, 
Oh, you didn't know. They started changing their story. And the policeman started rewriting. And they said, oh, you know what? Go and have some coffee. Don't let this be. The same people. The same people. The same people. So the policeman said, you know what? Ordinary I would have charged you. Give you no three points straight here and 60 points and taking you to court. But from what is going on here, I believe there is no need for that. You are free, but I'm even going to make in my statement and write exactly what every one of them is saying. So don't, don't worry, you just go. And then the guy came back to me and he pulled me aside. I said, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to come, wherever they want, I'm going to testify. You didn't do anything wrong. And he said, by the way, you look like you're Ghanaian. I said, yes. He said, come, come, come. Then he started speaking. He said, this girl, she won't wait. She won't win. That's why she's behaving. She, it's a drama. I said, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> if he had not been. And the point I'm saying this is, he said, I was at Sweta. But something, something, something kept telling me, go back. Something kept telling me, go back. What has the Lord done? Please, could you put on the screen for us? Romans chapter 8 from verse 31 going from um, the Message Bible. And I want us all to read it. And then I'll bring my sermon to an end. And then we'll thank God. What has the Lord done? Maybe you find yourself like a David. Maybe you find yourself. The Message Bible. Or you don't have the message. Or you find yourself like a, uh, a Jeremiah. Okay, I'll read from here. He says, so what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? I love, I love the message Bible. So what do you think? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? That means it is impossible for you and I to lose. No matter what it is. David was right when he said, if he had not been for the Lord. So the message Bible is saying, with God on our side like this, how can we lose? If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us. He didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us. Embracing our conditions and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son. Is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? And who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of his chosen one? Hey! Okay, let's read it together. So, what do you think? With God on our side like this. How can we lose? Please go up again. See, he's excited. If God didn't hesitate to put everything on the line for us, embracing our conditions and exposing himself to the worst by sending his own son, is there anything else he wouldn't gladly and freely do for us? Who would dare tangle with God by messing with one of God's chosen? Who would dare even point a finger? The one who died for us, who was raised to life for us, is in the presence of God at this very moment, sticking up for us. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way, no trouble. No hard times. No hatred. Go up. Don't worry. Give them time. No, not hunger. Not homelessness. Not bullying threats. Not backstabbing. Not even the worst sins listed in scripture. They kill us in cold blood because they hate you. We are sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. None of this phases us. Because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God. God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Who 
dare lift a finger? Who dare lift a finger? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, just tell me where would I be? Where? Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, just tell me where. Would I be? Where would I be? Oh, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, just tell me where. Be on your feet, please. Where would I be? Oh, if it had not been. For the Lord on my side, oh, I, oh, oh, if it had somebody. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Where would I be? Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him. He kept me in the kill of his end. When he knew I've been part of side of the children, the God on the side of the wife, the God on the side of the husband. Somebody, 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 you lost it, you lost it by yes on your side, yes on your side. Hey, somebody thank him. Yes, yes, yes. Somebody be thankful. Celebrate his faithfulness. Celebrate his faithfulness. Celebrate his faithfulness. Celebrate his faithfulness. Yes, yes, yes. Go on a memory journey. Go on a memory journey. If he had not been for the Lord. If he had not been for the Lord. If he had not been for the Lord. Say, Lord, if he had not been for you. Somebody, yes. So let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He can me in the cradle of his arms. arms. When he knew I've been, been battered and torn, oh, so he did not have for the Lord on my side. 
Could you take me back to the verse 31, Romans 8, the message? With God on our side like this, how can we lose? Maybe you are standing here. You look around, you are not losing. But maybe too you are standing here, but when you look around, it looks like you are losing. But he says, how can he ask the question, how can we lose? You will not lose. Let us begin to be thankful unto him. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Thank him that Lord, I'm not losing. Lord, I'm not losing. Lord, I'm not losing. Lord, I'm not losing because you did not hesitate to put everything on the line for me. For that reason, Lord, uh, everything around me looks like I'm losing, but I'm not losing. I'm not losing. For I recall your faithfulness just like Jeremiah. Somebody begin to thank him. Begin to be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful. Go on a memory journey. The things they said or they are still saying. Ah, the letters you received, oh, the one that is on the way you think is coming. When you look around, what is happening? Ah, you will not lose. You will not lose. And for that reason, you need to be grateful. You need to be grateful and thankful. Ah, yeah, Kabaha. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. It looks like somebody or something, a situation has lifted a finger at you. Hey, somebody don't be shaking up. I'm forever. We are grateful, oh God. We celebrate your faithfulness. You've been faithful. You've been faithful. Second Timothy 2. He says in the verse 13, even when we are unfaithful, he still remains faithful. For he cannot deny himself. Hey, he is faithful. He has been faithful. He is faithful. And has been faithful. Somebody thank him. Somebody praise him. Somebody worship him. I'm forever grateful for the cross. Somebody thank him. Somebody thank him. Somebody thank him. Somebody thank him. Even in our in our unfaithfulness, he is still faithful. He has remained 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 faithful. faithful. Somebody celebrate his faithfulness. Thank him. To draw nigh to you. But you closed yourself in frail humanity. Yes, you did not wait for me to cry out. He says it is on the Lord's mercy that you and I are not consumed. But you let me we are not bent. We, 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 we will not perish. It is because of his mercy. It is because of his mercy that sickness should have killed you. To you. That accident should have killed you. Oh, I'm that situation should have damaged you. But here you and I are standing. Here we are standing. Yes, here we are standing. Here we are standing. Yes, yes, yes. He is on your side. And has been on your side. He is on your side. And has been on your side. He is on your side. And has been on your side. To yes. seek and save the Lord, I'm oh, forever grateful. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever grateful to you. Yes, I'm forever grateful for, for the cross. Yes, Yes, 
Our next prayer of thanksgiving, we say, Lord, we are thankful to you for your faithfulness to TBC. Lord, we are grateful for your faithfulness to TBC. Somebody begin to thank him. Lift up the church before the Lord. Say, Lord, for the church, for the church, we like David. And the people in a procession Great stand before you. And we celebrate your faithfulness for this church. Oh, great things he has done. Greater things he will do. We celebrate. Oh, For the man of God, we thank you for the faithful, for your faithfulness for the woman of God. We thank you for your faithfulness for all the pastors, the trustees, the elders, the leaders, the deacons for your church. Somebody, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. over the next the next slide for us we pray in the last prayer of thanksgiving i'm asking you throughout this year from first january what is that one thing that one thing that you and i can say for this one lord i'm eternally grateful look 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 at here he says they kill us in cold blood because they hate you we are sitting ducks. They pick us off one by one. Who knows sitting ducks? Or sitting ducks? You see, when we were kids, we used to have these toy guns. And then you put these ducks there. And then you aim. When you shoot, it falls over. Hmm? It falls over. And sometimes life becomes like a sitting duck. And that's why you keep saying, Why me? It's like everything you. What is that one thing? When somebody sneezes, by the time you get home, you are sneezing. When somebody comes every time for that thing, but yet here you and I are, standing before God, when they thought they had shot you and you had fallen over, you crawl yourself back up. You are unkillable. You have been diagnosed and diagnosed and diagnosed. You have become a wonder. You have become a wonder. When the pastors were praying last week, Pastor Steve said something. He gave a test. He said, Pastor, one of the members you have been praying for went to the hospital and said, ah, the doctor said, how come that this disease is going? It's just vanishing from you. It's just going. And Pastor Steve, Steve screamed. He said, the prayer is working. What? You know, you have, you have begun to baffle medical experts. What is that one thing? Begin to thank him for it. Tell him that, Lord, I hold this one thing. I hold this one thing. Yes, Savior, thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you, my Lord. We are saved. That one thing, that one thing, that one thing, that one thing, that one thing.
Your love never fails and never keeps and never runs out on me. Your love, your love, your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love. Hallelujah. Oh, your love, your love, your love never fails. Your love never fails. It never gives Never runs out on me. Your love never fails. At this moment, I want you to take an offering, take an envelope, and celebrate God's faithfulness. If you need an envelope, the ashes will give you an envelope. And when you when you take the envelope. In that journey, in that spirit of a memory journey of thankfulness, give an offering unto the Lord you have never given this year. And come to the altar here and lay it here and thank him. This morning, whilst I was praying, then the Lord took me to a memory journey that six years ago, I was here when my mom called me from the store. And said the entire family is in an accident. The devil wants to wipe us out. I said, What do you mean? He said, This morning, it was a Saturday. He says, Your dad drove the boys to the church. They went and had a rehearsal with the choir because they, they are musicians. And when they were coming up from nowhere, an escalator truck came and hit the car. And when she sent me a WhatsApp photo of the car, it is like a thing that has been flattened. And they had to, they called the fire brigade. And they had to use something to cut the car piece, cut gently, just to, you know. He said, when they moved them, my dad had nothing, not even a scratch. And the fireman asked, how did this happen? By my other brothers, they were all gone. They were collapsed. I mean, they, had, they, were, they were in a coma. And when I saw the photos of them lying, lifeless, with tubes all around, and my mom said, the doctors are saying, it's a 40, 60 chance that they will live. Even if they live, they will be cabbage. And my mom said, they didn't do anything. They just went for rehearsal for the next Sunday. How did God do this? And the next day, my mom gave me a report. Said, oh, they placed some like metals in them. And they were in the hospital for about... One was in the hospital for about two months. The other was about eight months. And while I was praying this morning, the Lord took me back. He said, have you looked at your brothers? They are strong, energetic. In fact, the wife of one gave birth yesterday. And the Lord was reminding me to look at my children. And then he said again, your daughter, when we gave birth to her three days, she was in my arms. I said, how come she's not doing well? He said, I don't see any signs of her not breathing. He said, amen. How do you know? I said, the baby is not breathing. He said, ah, she's not breathing. They dialed 999. They took her out. They didn't know what was wrong with her. A three-day-old baby. The doctors threw the stone and said, she died. Prepare for the worst. I saw my wife fell down screaming. And I was in St. James College first year. And it was snowing. And they said, we've done everything. We placed oxygen on her. Even the oxygen we were giving her is not going in. So they, they cut a box and then put the box around her neck. 
and passed also said maybe for some reason they said it is not okay they took everything and the world we were in just mothers and babies and you will hear a scream ah then you see that a baby is gone and then they will move her away in the family they moved them one after the other about four families then they came to myself Diana and Joseph and the boys they were playing football in the world they didn't know what was going on and as I remember sitting down on the floor and praying I said God is this not what you told me to do you didn't give her to us to take her away and I started praying I started praying from 11 a.m. I started praying about 8 p.m. one of the nurses came and said ah, it looks as if the air is going she's breathing she's breathing by herself now she's breathing by herself and then the girl started crying she started crying she started crying and the nurses gave her a bottle of milk but and then another but within about 10 minutes three bottles gone and today she last Sunday she was eight years and the Lord was saying look at her have I not been faithful unto you have I not been faithful and I believe most of you sitting here you have stories to tell God but I want you to go back in the name of Jesus so Mr. Cheke please for us doing prayers in the church we did a prayer to you I will see the Lord do that and I want to ask this and I want you to come with your offering here kneel before the Lord and thank him an offering you have never given before because one thing you have to know is that you can't pay for it nothing can pay for it nothing can pay for it David Riley said if it had not been for the Lord he was on our side if it had not been for the Lord what shall I say unto the Lord no All no no to say great things, great things in the world he has done worship for me in the worship place. yes please and then you come great things thank you he has done great so let us come from the back let us come from the top the back he will do all to the
Put your hands together for Jesus. What a start. Great word. Very encouraging. Straight to the point. Precise. Clarity and power. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for the hard work that has gone into the message. Keep it up. Amen. I want to encourage us all to come inviting someone with us tomorrow. Don't say because prophet did not come, you are not coming. You have to come to register the fact that you are grateful to your God who has been faithful to you. Amen. And that that supersedes Prophet, not coming. Glory to God. And you are not coming because of prophet. But you are coming because your God is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tomorrow we will receive the ministry of Pastor Francis Sapon. And I know that it will be another level. Shall we be on our feet? I want you to look into the eyes of somebody, tell the person, the Lord has been faithful to me. For the second time. And for the last time. And now let's say the grace to one another. And now may the grace. And surely. All the days. Amen. God bless you and thank you.